Back in 1793, Governor Simcoe had surveyed a route that would do double duty, a military road and a way to open the north to settlers. So a famous street was born, and named after an old political friend, Sir George Young. In time, Young Street became the longest street in the world and the major north-south artery in the structure of the city of Toronto, the dividing line between east and west. As workers and shoppers streamed into the city, the transportation system grew like a giant cobweb. The history of the TTC, or Toronto Transit Commission, goes back to the 1830s. You either walked in the old town of York, or you hired a cab, horse-drawn cab. There were stagecoaches uh, running from Toronto to points north, east and west, particularly up Young Street. Uh, the first organized uh, public transit service was a horse-drawn omnibus service small urban stagecoach which ran from the St. Lawrence Market up Young Street to Yorkville, just above Bloor. But electricity was coming. At the Toronto Industrial Exhibition in the late 1880s, the public got to see it in action. Within 15 years, the horse was out of a job. Uh, when the TDC took over in 1921, it introduced large modern streetcars. However, the seating was wooden. They had coal stoves. They were two-man operated. The conductor uh, was in charge of the stove. Some of these streetcars pulled trailers, so you had a, a second conductor in charge of the second car, also with a coal stove. During the First World War, a massive bridge was thrown across the Don Valley to carry traffic eastwards from the growing city into the Danforth neighborhoods. The designer had a shrewd idea, add a lower streetcar deck. It wasn't used, but in time it would save the Transit Commission a fortune. It was called the Big Dig when Young Street was uprooted for a subway line from Union Station north to Eglinton. Later, a second line along Bloor connected to Danforth and use the lower rail deck across the viaduct. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.